Oh, good day. Welcome back to Surfing Australia TV, presented by Harvey Norman. I'm Vaughan Blakey, and welcome to my house. We've got a huge show for you today. We check out the action from the Harvey Norman Junior Division at this year's Hyundai Australian Board Riders Battle National Final down in Newcastle. And we head to Karamas in Bali, Indonesia, with some shred lords for the Limitless Cup. But before any of that, we're going to head to the QT Hotel on Queensland's Gold Coast to find out the very best of 2022 and induct his greatness, the CT legend Taj Burrow, into the Surfing Australia Hall of Fame. On Australian Surfing's Night of Nights, we celebrate the biggest moments and outstanding achievements that occurred throughout 2022. From our best grassroots board rider clubs and industry icons to up-and-coming champions and, of course, the latest Hall of Fame inductee, Taj Burrows. Here's all the highlights from the Australian Surfing Awards. Man, we're here to celebrate all those amazing achievements that went down in 2022. Australian surfing was back in a big way. It was gritty, it was full of mongrel, it was full of power, it was full of rail, it was froth it! We have 51 finalists tonight in 17 categories. Well done and good luck tonight. There's so many characters and larrikins and uh, administrators. And I think our surfers get all the glory, they get all the attention, but it's the people behind the surfers that need the recognition and, and celebration, and that's what we're here to do tonight. Eminem's been special for a long time, you know, we do so much for the community, so much for the kids. We've been doing the right thing for so long, by the club and by everything else, and we've kind of just come the full circle in the last year or so now, putting, you know, results together. We're really well-rounded in the community, family aspect, and then also performance now as well as the last box we've ticked. Eminem, everybody! Thank you everyone for the recognition. Thank you to Surfing Australia as well, providing surfing clinics to some of the most marginalised groups around Australia is uh, incredibly rewarding, but most importantly, very impactful. So we, we love the partnership and we look forward to working together. And the Ruffy Coach of the Year is Tom Whitaker. Wow guys, thanks so much for this cool award. Uh, didn't know it was actually offered to us coaches. It's quite a relative new thing in surfing, but. Surfing Australia and everyone else, thank you so much. I think you guys have been at the forefront of guiding us coaches and we thank you so much. I don't know if you caught this guy in the recent eddy, but what are you doing out there, man? Well, I'm stoked to be here, very nice. It's nice to just, everyone on the same playing field, talking, conversing and just being, uh, being there, present. So when you're going on right, how do you not know a big left is not coming at you? Seriously? I don't. You don't? <laughs> it's been really cool getting to work with Surfing New South Wales, Surfing Queensland, Surfing Victoria um, and Surfing Australia to present my workshops and try and inspire the youth but also the greater surfing community to take care of your mental health a bit better because mental health is something that every single person in this room has and something that we should all try and take care of. So yeah, very proud to accept this award. I just can't believe that there's so many amazing people within this sport. We just had the best time, especially 11 um, members of the Australian team that all kind of came from different sections of the continent. And um, we came together in such an amazing way and just had such a good team spirit. And I just really enjoyed that part of it too. And the winner tonight, the Female Paris Surfer of the Year Award, Emma Dieters. And the Griffith University Male Rising Star Award goes to Willis Truma. Highlight B winning I Say World Juniors. Yeah, that was real. That was pretty rad. Um, so I guess so that's probably why I'm here. Got the nomination. Sierra, you had a massive 2022. What would be the highlights for you? Uh, probably winning Stab High and getting into the Pipe Masters and getting to feed up Pipe. That was amazing and it was. Yeah, it was such a good year with so many highs. It was such a, yeah, it was so fun. I love it. Surf of the year, male, is Jack Robinson. I'm super stoked to get this award again. Um, yeah, thank you guys so much for the support. And uh, I wish I could be there. We're in Hawaii at the moment. Hopefully next time we can hold it off a little bit longer and then we'll get home in time. Look forward to inspiring the next generation too. So yeah, it means a lot. And um, thanks Jared for accepting the award. And uh, see you guys all soon. And the female Harvey Norman Surfer of the Year Award goes to none other than the GOAT, Stephanie Gilmore. 
Hi everyone. Uh, sorry I couldn't be there tonight. I'm over here in Hawaii competing. I just want to say thank you so much for this award. Last year was a huge moment in my career. I always dreamed of winning eight world titles and that event in, in Trestles was something that I'll never forget. It was a really special moment. But I hope there's still more to come and I just want to thank you all for the support. Surfing Australia, everything that you guys do for us and um, yeah, enjoy the night. Surf photo of the year. This is one we look forward to. While the image must be taken by an Australian photographer, the photo can be taken anywhere around the world and can be drawn from action, lifestyle portrait, or scenic photography. I think photography is equally as powerful as it's ever been. I think I've had some of the best times of people's life and I've shared those moments and, and you know, a lot of the surfers have always had these incredible times around the world in incredible surf, amazing places. And I get to share it. And I get to keep it too, so it's amazing. If you haven't seen this movie yet, I can't tell you enough how incredible it is to have this man standing for this award. The heart, the soul, the vulnerability. It's nice um, to be recognised uh, for what we do and, and for, for what we put into this film. Like, so much has gone into it, a lot of sacrifice, uh, a lot of hard work, there's been broken bones. To get recognition for it, it's, it's nice. Ladies and gentlemen, your Hall of Fame inductee for 2023 is Taj Burrow. Thanks a million for uh, this induction. I'm uh, very grateful, very honoured. I've dedicated all my life to surfing, like most of you in that room tonight, and I just uh, love it to bits. So feeling very grateful, and um, just thanks to you guys for throwing my name in the mix amongst all my favourite surfers there. So, yeah, I'm feeling pretty special, so thanks for that. Surfing in Australia is in a very good place. We have a, a deep pool of incredible talent. And I'm very proud of the way that our team at Surfing Australia have really nurtured and developed that talent over the years. One thing that we like to reassure our, of our surfers is the importance of never forgetting where you come from. When you respect and understand that the shoulders that you lean on on the way up are the same shoulders that you need to lean on on the way back down, it makes all of our journey a lot easier and a lot better. Welcome back to Serving Australia TV, presented by Harvey Norman. Well, every year, the Honda Australian Board Riders Battle provides the ultimate showcase of surfing talent from around the country. The Harvey Norman Junior Division highlights the importance of Board Riders Clubs in developing the competitive skills of our next wave of champions. Let's check out some of the best Groms from around the country ripping up Newcastle Beach. Go, Grommy. Chill Out Lounge, which has been chock full of kids all day long. Harvey Norman, of course, big supporters of junior surfing in this event, supporting grassroots and junior development pathways. And that's why we've just seen this level of surfing that we have so far in the ABB finals. Big thanks to Harvey Norman. Surfing Australia TV, presented by Harvey Norman. Just south of Sydney is the little coastal hamlet of Stanwell Park, home to rivals competitor Kalani Ball. Let's take a trip down there right now and visit some of the waves that helped shape him as a surfer.
Stanmore Park means everything to me. I've grown up here my whole life with all my mates and just got to hang around the beach in a super quiet town. And our parents would always be trying to find us because we'd just be up in the mountains. Always really good fun. We felt really free down here. Yeah, something I really love about the Illawarra is just being able to jump in the car and head down the coast and across the Seacliff Bridge. It's such a beautiful place to check out and there's just so many things like that along the coast road that you can stop in on and look at, out at the ocean, look at the escarpment. It's, um, yeah, it's a really beautiful drive. Some of my favourite surf breaks is Stanwell Park, Coldcliff, but you can find a beach at pretty much every town, every corner. Yeah, there's a lot of fun waves around here. Something you might not know about the Illawarra is the amount of hiking tracks up all the mountains and stuff. There's really good lookouts that look over the whole Illawarra. Really quiet up there, you can escape from everything and yeah, it's just really pretty. Yeah, I always loved coming home after travelling and competing just to get home, see all my mates and not have to surf with too many people and just have quiet sessions down your local beach. Yeah, it's really good. Surfing really gives me a great escape from just everyday things. You can just go leave everything in the water and have a fun time and not have to think about anything. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, something I'd tell someone from overseas coming here would be just because um, it's such a quiet place, just respect everyone, respect the locals and um, yeah, and then you're going to have a really good time. It's super quiet so you can get waves to yourselves and you'll have a really good time. Well, after the break, Josh Kerr and Clancy Dawson are going to take some of Australia's most promising junior talents on a no-holds-barred, limitless training camp. Kookaburra. Magpie. Oh! Froth and Gromit. That was sick. Welcome back to Surfing Australia TV, presented by Harvey Norman. Well, get ready to feast your eyes, folks, because former CT ripper Josh Kerr and Surfing Australia's performance pathway manager, Clancy Dawson, are just about to take some of the best juniors in the country overseas to the high-performance playground of Karamas in Bali for a full-blown expression session as part of the Limitless Camp. Get ready, because it's mad. Attention, please. Jetstar is paging the following passengers travelling to Denpasar on flight JQ57. Sierra Kerr, Lennox Smith, Izzy Campbell, Kobe Clements, Clancy Dawson, Josh Kerr. Please proceed immediately to gate 82. We're here in Brizzy Airport, about to do our first international limitless camp. We're going to head over to Commune in uh, Karamas and go surf the east coast of Bali there and enjoy some sessions. Yeah, we're all pretty fired up, ready to go. It's going to be pretty fun. East Coast of Bali here is by far the, like the most high performance kind of surfing, easy accessible location in the world in my opinion. So bringing them here, getting them in different, on some of the different breaks, just pushing themselves in like a little group environment with different mindsets and different drills and stuff like that to, to level themselves up. I'm not fired up. I'm just sending it that hard. Oh, oh, that was sick. If we're not gonna be using jet skis, this is where you wanna be. Oh, that was yeah, huge. that was a turn. 6-5 for that first one. Pretty average score. It's for the conditions out there today. Kaipo, can you hear me? We've got so much depth in Australian surfing. There's literally 50 kids you could have chosen and you could justify why. So it is a very hard job to narrow it down to just two men, two women to, to get this opportunity. And just their skill sets, along with their attitude to want to be the best and to want to push into you know, these limitless sort of areas. We're not looking for kids who are just playing it safe because we just don't think that's going to cut it anymore.
that's why we've got the kids who we do have here. Crazy that I've been chosen like to be with Sierra and Lennox and Kobe. Like, I'm pretty happy to be here. Being at home and not having too many good surfers and then coming over here and being surrounded by these guys, it's like really pushing to like want to do better because they're doing big things and you're like, oh, I want to do better. Limitless means to me trying to go past what you think in your mind. Usually you have a certain level in your mind of what you should be able to do. When you see a section even trying something that you haven't even thought of, like going past what your mind thinks you should be able to do and then once you go past that seeing actually how far you can go. Then I just saw a big ramp and went, what would I do off that? And I go, you would do a full road out to the flats and you'd land it perfect, all right? One of the best 17 year old servers in the world and that's what you have to do at that age, so don't overthink it. Simple. When I started years ago, I kind of saw that Australians were dominating in a lot of ways in surfing, but the aerial side was a part that I didn't think we were dominating in. And so we put in place like Talent ID program, which was really pushing the progression. I think we had a lot of success, started to change what had been done in the Australian sort of coaching system a little bit. And yeah, then seeing Sierra come through and obviously knowing Kersey and, and what he'd done, I just thought, okay, let's let's take this up a level again. And I thought, this guy gets it, obviously, and, and um, I'd love to work with him. And I think this will really help Australian surfers and the young kids coming through. I was brought into it as kind of an advisor of sorts and kind of maestro to the whole Limitless camp vibe. And mainly just based on progression, first and foremost, just leveling up each kid's game to get to that next level for, yeah, bring it to the world on the CT. I think we've got some similarities in like our mindset of how we see surfing developing. So it, was, it got me super inspired and thankfully he's just been super generous with his time and, and wanted to do more and more. So we're like, all right, let's, let's grow it. From camp one, I don't think they really knew what they were in for. Like the first morning, we just started stripping their wax off their boards, cutting apart their grips and sticking these strap mounts and straps onto all their boards and we took them straight down to the ocean, whipping them behind a jet ski going like 40 k's an hour at all these sections with straps on. And to watch how quick they like, just did the craziest airs they've ever done in their life and mixed in a whole bunch of progression into those airs and how excited they were because none of them had ever done it before. We were doing high reps on the jet skis. I'm like feeling exactly how it feels, like repetition and like where our limbs and core is meant to be on and all of like the above. You just get that feeling over and over and over again and then hopefully transition over. We're just trying to push ourselves and try new stuff and I felt like as soon as I came out of that last camp I could just do so many more airs just more consistently and just keeps like your mindset really open. And that's almost the other part of it, just having these kids like feed off each other like together in those kind of platforms. If you did it one-on-one -on -one like that, it wouldn't be the same. When you get like a group of them together feeding off each other, that type of energy, that's where like magic can happen for sure. Because he's like, well, we don't need one jet ski, we need three jet skis, we, we need straps. Just more, more, more. And he's like, everything's got to be fun. It's got to be music every session. There ain't nobody. <laughs> We're going to go wakeboarding, skateboarding, you know, go-karting, skydiving. We had parkour people come in and show us some tumbling things. Just saw a different approach on other sports, like the motorbike riders. We went down there and watched them and seeing how big they went. Yeah, it's cool to see, like, the way that they all try and do something they haven't done. Some people, like the parkour guys, take more steps to it, and then the freestyle motocross guys more just send it. So, yeah, it's kind of cool to see the difference in everyone's sports. Watching them progressively over the next camp or two take that without straps and, and all of them doing the best airs of their lives, like no straps behind the jet ski and like subpar waves just getting yanked around into these sections. Even though it's like semi not reality, like some of the stuff we're doing, it's like so outside the box, but you can take so much confidence out of those kind of activities and doing it that way into your regular kind of surfing, knowing that you can do that on a wave, whether it be with straps, no straps, like 
behind a jet ski, like whatever. And just the level of confidence they can put into their surfing, you know, who knows where that can take you on that side. It's not about them just linking maneuvers together perfectly from start to finish. We're going like, I want to see them fall. I want to see them pushing themselves. I want to see them stepping outside of their comfort zone, trying new things that they've never tried in pretty much most sessions. This trip, I'm hoping to get out of it, just being able to go bigger and more consistent with the airs that we're trying. I think it's really important to be able to have the next step on lock. I reckon that's like the hole for me to fill up for sure, to be consistent and do radical stuff, but you have to do the basics first and step back to do a huge leap. I'm hoping to just get as much advice and feedback as possible so I can progress, like not just now, but into the future and I keep on building my surfing up. I just want to know that I've put in 110% so I can go back and tell my friends and family what I've done and the difference that I've made here. Gonna go put some cameras down, that's the goal. Well that's it for this episode of Surfing Australia TV, presented by Harvey Norman. I'm Vaughan Blakey, shred you later.